You are a Locked On Braves postcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Braves postcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. Grant McCauley, Jake Mastriani with you after a split of a doubleheader for the Atlanta Braves who take three out of four from the Washington Nationals in their final road trip of the regular season. It's all coming down to the wire, and the Braves have just a week's worth of regular season baseball to play. Crazy that we've made it this far, but hey, there's much more to go. Braves losing the opener of this doubleheader by a 3-2 score, rally to win the nightcap by an 8-5 score. We'll talk about all of that. Plus, uh, we got to get into what's going on with the Braves' rotation. They've lost Charlie Morton for the remainder of the regular season and the first round of the playoffs. Jake and I will talk about that, as well as get you set up for that Cubs series, which is coming your way beginning on Tuesday at Truist Park. Before we get into any and all of that, make sure you subscribe to Locked On Sports Atlanta right here on YouTube. Click that bell. You'll get those cool notifications every time we drop a new episode. Leave us a like and a comment. We appreciate those. And make sure you're subscribed to Locked On Braves wherever you get your podcast. Uh, Jake, all in all, kind of a sloppy looking day up in D.C., but a split of a doubleheader, three out of four in the series. I think that you'll take that just about any time you have to leave home and uh, bring home a series win. Yeah, certainly series wins on the road. You'll take them, especially in a four-game series. One thing I didn't have today is the Nationals out hitting the Atlanta Braves in both games. But uh, they, like I said, kind of sloppy games, a little bit of both of them, some bad weather still in that first one. But the Braves do get the split and win the series, like you said. Yeah, and some different-looking lineups for the Braves as well. And let's talk about those. We'll get into game one first and get the bad stuff out of the way. Braves 3-2 losers in the opener, 99-56 and on the season. That would change in the nightcap. Nats improved to 69-87 and with a 3-2 win. Braves two runs on just six hits, no errors, four men left aboard. Three runs, ten hits, no errors, seven men left on for the Nationals. They certainly didn't knock around Allen Winans, but he takes a tough luck loss. Meanwhile, Jackson Rutledge picks up the win. He's 1-1. One and one. Winans 1-2. One and two. The save went to Kyle Finnegan. His 27th of the year. Uh, let's start with the rotational stuff and, and, and a little bit on Alan Winans. And of course, what we're going to see out of Kyle Wright, it looks like moving forward as well, who could be working out of the bullpen from this point on. And then we'll get into the Charlie Morton of it all. But Winans, I thought Jake just threw himself a pretty good little start. Two earned runs, seven hits, five innings, couple of walks, six strikeouts. I think you'll take that certainly. And with Kyle Wright able to cover the final three innings, it's a doubleheader day in which the Braves did not have to completely empty out their bullpen and, you know, weary those guys out as we head down the stretch here. Another good start by Winans. I mean, I think of the guys who've come up this year, I think he's maybe been the most consistent of that group of these fifth starters that the Braves have brought in. You look at it now, you know, a 4-3-3 ERA, a 1-3-7 whip in five games. I mean, I think you'll take that out of your your fifth starter. So he's certainly shown shown some good things. And like you said, gave the Braves some length in this one. He certainly, you know, wasn't the reason they lost this one. Offense couldn't get going and just, just a good job of mixing up his pitches, keeping hitters off balance. I mean, you look, he threw four pitches in this game, all of them 20 or more times. I mean, that is just, you know, obviously working within your arsenal, mixing and matching to try to get that weak contact. So, uh, yeah, good stuff by Winans. Again, I think he's been really solid. Obviously, he had the one blow up when he saw the Mets team for a second time in like a yeah. week span. But outside of that, he's been really good when he's come up. And, you know, as we're going to talk about later, maybe a guy that they need at some point again. Yeah, at least they're going to have to keep an eye on it. And you want to have some options because things, uh, as far as that is, is concerned, have changed a little bit with the Max Fried injured list stint that's going on. And we presume that he'll be good to go for the National League Division Series. But losing another horse and now having Kyle Wright working out of the bullpen is what it sounds like. I don't think this is the worst idea. You and I have talked about this quite a bit. I mean, you could give him some starts, see if he could give you that length that you want. And if not, you know, maybe the shorter burst for him would be something that would be both beneficial for Wright, who's missed so much time, and for the Braves, who could use a multi-inning option, which it could certainly still be. Three innings, one run on three hits, no walks, a couple of strikeouts for Kyle. And as much as anything, Jake, I think he's still probably trying to just fine-tune things, maybe knock a little bit of the rust off. But either way, I don't think this bullpen thing is a bad idea. In fact, I think it's something where the Braves are going to have to perhaps get a little bit creative with how they want to construct this National League Division Series roster at the very least. It always seemed like the, the most logical move for Kyle Wright, I think, just wasn't enough time for really, like we said last time, he wasn't even stretched out. He's not even stretched out to a starter's workload at this point. Right. And so it just always seemed like this was going to be the natural fit for him unless he just came back and was on fire. And that wasn't the case. You could obviously see there was still some rust, understandably. So uh, I think this move makes a ton of sense. And I think he's a guy that maybe, you know, you bring him in like you did for this one for three innings to try to bridge that gap. Maybe a starter doesn't have it. Maybe 
maybe you, you know, just piggyback, use a couple of guys to get through a start, you know, obviously seeing how the rotation shakes out. So I think, again, this was the good choice, the the choice the Braves had to go with because there just wasn't enough time for, for Kyle Wright to be stretched out and give you the confidence you would need to start him in a postseason so a postseason game so and he looked good I know gave up the, the run in that first inning there I think that maybe maybe the biggest challenge for him is some you know somebody who's used to being a starter you know how do you get ready to come in right. and open roll like right. that may take, take him a little bit longer so that might be the one thing not that I necessarily thought he got hit around that first inning coming out but still that's going to be an adjustment for him something he's not used to yeah, it will be. And just talking to Kyle a little bit, I mean, like he feels like he can go out there and compete, but he's also said, look, last year was last year. I got to compete with what I have this year. And we can see with the Arsenal, the fastball is not quite as much zip as it had a year ago, but still, you know, for touching 94 miles an hour, he does have a very good curveball and some secondary pitches that can help him, you know, navigate through a lineup. Maybe if we just asked him to do it one time through, maybe we see a little uptick in the velocity, not, you know, expect him to go out there throwing 97, 98 all of a sudden. In fact, I'm not advising that either. But this could just be a net benefit for him and for the club and find a role that fits for a guy who was such a big part of the winning that the Braves did a year ago and has pretty much been on the sidelines way more than he wanted to be here in 2023. And speaking of the sidelines, I want to go through this quickly because we've got another game to talk about. But uh, the news about Charlie Morton landing on the injured list, I know there was a lot of theory about, okay, well, what does this mean for the division series? But the Braves flatly came out and said, Charlie Morton is out for the division series. He is dealing with um, inflammation in his right uh index finger, and so that's going to land him on the 15-day IL, which means he wouldn't be able to be activated prior to the division series starting. That's a tough blow for the Braves because, as we talked about time and again, Jake, this is one of your top three starters, and you needed Charlie Morton, I feel like, to feel like, you, if you're the Braves, that you had you know, the best possible three to throw in a five-game series, and now they're going to have to make some different plans. Definitely a big loss here. I mean, Charlie Morton, as much as we've talked about the inconsistencies from him, I mean, he is still one of the better third starters in all of baseball, especially when he's on. So tough loss for the Braves here. I would assume they just couldn't, you know, they couldn't say he was going to be back 100% for the NLDS. So you got to put him on yeah. the IL. Otherwise, you know, obviously they would just roll the dice there. But hopefully Braves do advance and he's ready. Good thing about the NLDS, you have those off days. You could technically get through that series only using three starters and getting Freed and Strider pitching mm -hmm. twice in that series if you have to. Um, but, yeah, going to be a big loss for the Braves not having Morton there. Yeah, I mean, it's just no two ways about it. You want to have the depth. And, you know, even if Charlie Morton was kind of only able to give you, you know, maybe five innings and just keep you in the ball game, doesn't have to go out there and dominate. This is still somebody that you were counting on being part of this and has shown in the past that he can be a very big pitcher in the postseason. So going to be a tough loss for the Braves to adjust uh, without Charlie Morton in the division series. But we'll talk about that more, of course, as that closes in and those decisions are made about what that rotation is going to look like at that time. Not a lot of offense to talk about in this one. Kevin Pillar knocked in a run. Ron Lacuna Jr. only played the first game. He DH'd. He went one for four. Nicky Lopez was one for three. Nice play at shortstop going up the middle at one point. But then we get to the ninth inning, and again, I don't want to drag it out, but I did think it was worth mentioning because I haven't seen too many of them. How about a broken bat home run for Sean Murphy? I mean, if, if anything was a microcosm of just getting something to go right for him, it's been a tough second half. A broken bat homer, maybe that's an omen. Maybe that's a little sign that Sean Murphy's going to finally have some things going his way. Certainly hope so. I mean, what an incredible swing to be able to hit the ball that hard on a bat that, bat that I'm assuming was already cracked before he made that swing. Um, but uh, yeah, just, you know, he has big power. We know that, but definitely a guy you want to see him get going. Yeah, the Braves need their catchers to get going. Sean Murphy, an incredible first half, an all-star, and of course, uh, some big you know, responsibilities for both he and for Travis Darno for handling this pitching staff as you head into October. This is one of the things the Braves wanted to have was options behind the plate, not asking somebody to catch every single inning of every single post uh, postseason series, which has kind of been a trend for the Braves in recent years. We'll see how they manage that as well once we get there. We got to talk about game two, the Braves picking up that 8-5 win. Before we do, though, I want to tell you about one of our great sponsors. That is, of course, Sleeper. And this episode of the Braves Postcast is brought to you by Sleepers. The MLB playoffs are right around the corner. That means the clock is ticking on your chance to win 100 times your cash on daily fantasy baseball. You pick more or less on stats for your favorite baseball stars, home runs, hits, strikeouts, whatever you like, right there in the app for up to a 100-time payout on Sleeper. You get your picks right, you could win big. Use the promo code Locked On. You'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply, so check out Sleeper today. Uh, the Braves in Game 2 were able to pick up a win by an 8-5 score. They got the offense going, a little bit of the home run ball uh, from some unlikely of uh, candidates for that. Uh, but the Braves picking up their 100th win of the season, first club in Major League Baseball to get there. 
the first time that the team has had back-to-back 100-win seasons since 2002 and 2003, and only the third time in the 152-year franchise history for the Braves. They've had consecutive 100-win campaigns, so a feather in their cap for sure. Eight runs, 10 hits, one error, and eight men left on base for the Braves, who are now 156. Nationals are now 69-88. and 88. Five runs, 12 hits, one error, 10 men left aboard. Spencer Strider picks up the win. He's now 19-5 and five on the season. Yoan Adon is 2-4 and four on the year, or Adon, I should say, and the Braves are able to split this doubleheader. Spencer Strider kind of had to battle through it. Five and two-thirds innings, obviously wanted to get through the sixth. One stretch of five consecutive hits by the Nationals as they put a three spot on the board against him, believe bottom of the third, uh, but not really the strikeouts we're accustomed to seeing, though the stuff, Jake, at least to me, looked like it was there. It just seems like, and you pointed this out earlier, the Nationals piled up a lot of base hits, and a lot of them seemed to just be some really nice hitting, and that you know, sometimes, even for a lineup like Washington that may not have the biggest names, they're still major leaguers, and they're still capable of beating you in a given at bat. They are, and uh, it, it, it continues this trend for Strider this year where it's just that one inning, he gives up a crooked number. Usually it's because of a three-run homer. This time it was because of five straight hits, and four of those were hard hit. Like you said, they were good swings. I mean, mm-hmm. he did have the one bloop with two outs that really hurt that kept the yeah. inning alive there, but, I mean, four of those five hits, they were stung really well, so you got to give Nationals hitters a lot of credit, and I think give them a lot of credit overall. Like you said, just four strikeouts in this game for Spencer Strider. Not too many times is he going to go into the sixth inning and only have four strikeouts, which leaves him short of breaking that franchise record. Uh, Maybe he'll get another chance to do that next time out here. But uh, again, biggest thing, Strider made it through the outing. I would assume he's healthy, haven't heard otherwise. So let's just hope that remains the case. Yeah, let's keep the old fingers crossed there because the starting pitchers on this road trip, this very short road trip, have uh, dropped like flies in the first couple of days. So let's hope Spencer Strider is able to make that final start. He'd get a crack not only at John Smoltz's strikeout record as he's two away from matching, three away from breaking, but also, as I mentioned, he's 19-5 and five now. So chance at 20 wins. And the Braves starting rotation, I mean, with a couple of guys already out and with having to patchwork a couple of spots, you, you would think that Spencer Strider, especially with the layoff to follow, would get one more outing here in the regular season. We'll see how that all plays out. It would presumably be against the Washington Nationals to start out that final series of the year. But Spencer, 95 pitches in this one, 68 of them strikes. And I think staying around the strike zone might have helped out the Washington club as well. They were very aggressive, especially early in counts. And Spencer was unable to avoid, as Jake mentioned, that big inning. Braves offense, though, able to put up some uh, runs as uh, they certainly needed to. And they put them up in bunches. Orlando Arcia, two for four, a double, three runs knocked in, a couple of runs scored. Kevin Pillar with a big two-run homer. Matt Olson went three for five, a double, knocked in his 133rd run of the year. That gives him the most in the Atlanta era for the Braves franchise history, and he's only two away from Eddie Matthews' modern franchise record of 135, and he's got six games to go after that. So I'd imagine that might be just another little piece of franchise history ahead for Matt Olson. But I don't want to bury the lead here, Jake. Longtime minor leaguer Forrest Wall hits his first major league home run. One for two, couple of walks, that homer, two runs knocked in. Uh, What a day for him. Nine years in the minors, over 3,500 plate appearances. It had to feel pretty sweet circling the bases for your first big league home run. Yeah, I'd love to see that. I mean, this is obviously one of the better moments of the weekend and a weekend that had some definitely bad ones for the Braves in terms of injuries to the rotation. But to see this for Forrest Wall, a guy who's stuck around with a once a top prospect uh, and a good, you know, high draft pick to be able to stick around, get this moment, get that home run and you know, a real shot to be on the postseason roster with the yeah. speed that he has. So uh, it's been a great year for him. He had a tremendous year at AAA as well. He's certainly earned this opportunity and just so happy that he's able to have that moment. Yeah. Weapon on the bases. I would imagine that there's a good spot for him to come in, not only help you out in the outfield, if you need him to for some defensive replacement duties, but obviously what he does on the base paths, a big part of that, but uh, he swung the bat pretty well. That doesn't hurt either. So we'll see how the Braves utilize him down the stretch. And of course, when they make their postseason roster decisions, it seems like Forrest wall has a role to play for this club for some late game speed, perhaps Braves with 299 home runs now on the year. Their next one would make him just a third club in Major League history and the first one in NL history to reach the 300 homer plateau. They need eight to tie the Minnesota Twins record and nine to break it in the final six games. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. And as I mentioned earlier on, but just wanted to say again, Ron Lacuna Jr. got game two off. I would imagine he'll be back in there raring to go as the Braves come home for their six-game homestand. We'll get you set up for that and talk a little bit about the Chicago Cubs series in just a moment. Before we do, though, I have to tell you about our other great sponsor for this episode of the show. It's brought to you by DoorDash. If you love the convenience of getting what you want right to your door, 
With DoorDash Grocery Delivery, you can stock up for the week or get those last-minute cravings conveniently. You'll get exactly what you ordered or we'll make it right, so sit back and enjoy quality groceries just like you picked them yourself. Get 50% off your first DoorDash order, up to a $20 value when you use the code LOCKEDONMLB at checkout. It's a limited time offer. Terms apply. That's locked on MLB for 50% off your first order with DoorDash up to $20. Braves and Cubs will be meeting for a three-game series. It starts at Truist Park on Tuesday night. Atlanta will enjoy an off day on Monday. It's Bryce Elder, uh, 12-4 and four against Justin Steele. So a very interesting pitching matchup. Elder, of course, is looking for a good start. Justin Steele, meanwhile, might be looking to just kind of put the final touches on what could be a Cy Young season for him. We'll see how all that voting you know, plays out, but he's certainly in the discussion. He's been a big part of the Cubs' success this year, so it's going to be a tough lefty that the Braves are dealing with in game one of this three-game series on Tuesday night, Jake. Braves have had a lot of success against lefties this year, but Justin Steele has had an amazing, you know, somewhat breakout year. I know it kind of started the previous season, but he really rolled it into this year. And like you said, having a Cy Young type season, don't know that he'll win it, but he's certainly in there with, with Snell and Strider and others. But great year for him. So it's going to be a tough test for this Braves lineup. And for Bryce Elder, I mean, look, no, no way around it. You know, there's some pressure on him now. Braves need him to, to show he can be that guy that they can trust potentially to get a postseason start. So he's going up against a postseason caliber team. It's a big game, big series for the Cubs. Right now they're just holding on to that last wild card spot right there with the Marlins and the Diamondbacks. This is a big series for the Cubs and a big series for the Braves to hopefully get locked in as the end of the season comes to an end. And these are the last real games you got until the postseason. Yeah, it's a big series, obviously, for the Cubs. For the Braves, meanwhile, over, over 100 wins. Still looking for that best record in baseball and home field advantage throughout the postseason. The Cubs have had a very wonky September. They were in position for the second wild card in the NL, but they have slid to that third spot in a battle that is still ongoing and may not be decided until all the way down to the wire. But it's going to be an important three-game set for the Cubs and important for Bryce Elder to bounce back from his last outing. A bunch of walks, kind of uncharacteristic. He's had a couple of those this year and said after that start that there was nothing good to take out of that. He wanted to forget it and get back out there and get that opportunity. That'll come on Tuesday night, 7.20 p.m. Eastern time, the first pitch at Truist Park, first of three between the Braves and the Cubs. That'll wrap things up for this edition of the Braves Postcast. As always, we appreciate you riding along with us. After each and every Braves game, we can get this to you. We aim to do that. So subscribe to Locked On Sports Atlanta right here on YouTube. Click that bell. You'll get the notifications every time we drop a new episode. And make sure you leave us those comments, those likes, share the show with a friend, and subscribe to Locked On Braves wherever you get your podcast. Once again, the Braves with a doubleheader split against the Washington Nationals. They drop game one, three to two. They win the nightcap eight to five, take three out of four in the series. For Jake Mastriani, I'm Grant McCauley. We will catch you next time. And until then, so long, everyone.